This is part two of our series on why IVF cycles fail after transfer. Check out this playlist for part one and other really helpful videos. There are two categories of IVF failure, problems with the embryo and problems with the carrier. On today's episode of Infertility TV, we will talk about problems with the carrier. A carrier is any woman that has an embryo placed into her uterus. The embryo could be from her own egg or another woman's egg, doesn't matter. For today's discussion, we are going to assume that the embryo is perfect and normal. Obviously, this isn't always the case, as we talk about in part one. And yes, an IVF cycle can fail after transfer because of multiple problems with the embryo and the carrier. First, let's talk about anatomic problems with the uterus. There are two categories of anatomic problems. One type are those that a woman is born with. The second type are uterine problems that are those that arise later, after birth. Every woman who is going to attempt to conceive with IVF should have some sort of uterine cavity evaluation before having an embryo transfer. This is extremely important. Even women who have been pregnant before and have had a normal delivery should still have a uterine cavity evaluation before attempting an embryo transfer. Women who have not had a cavity evaluation for a long time should also update one before an embryo transfer. There are several different methods for evaluating the uterine cavity, x-ray, ultrasound, or directly with a telescope. This last method is called hysteroscopy. At IVF1, this is our favored method for uterine cavity evaluation. Most of the anatomic problems with the uterus can be fixed surgically, but not all of them can. Sometimes, new problems can arise as a result of doing surgery on the uterus. For example, removing a mass from the uterus, such as a fibroid, could cause scar tissue to form inside the uterine cavity. It is important to repeat a uterine cavity evaluation after any surgery to correct a problem before proceeding with embryo transfer. One of the reasons that we like hysteroscopy to evaluate the uterus is that it also allows us to look for other types of uterine problems, including endometritis. Don't confuse this with endometriosis, which is a different problem. Endometritis is when there is inflammation of the uterine lining. This is usually caused by bacteria and can usually be treated with antibiotics. Let's talk a little bit more about the uterine lining. In order for an embryo to implant, the uterine lining has to go through some very important changes. The first change is that the lining gets thicker. This occurs as a result of estrogen. The second change is more important. This is when the lining actually develops the ability to allow an embryo to implant. In order for this to happen, a second hormone called progesterone is needed. Some women seem to have a problem where their uterine lining doesn't get very thick, even though there is plenty of estrogen around. There is plenty of science that shows that performing an embryo transfer when the lining is thin will lessen the chances that an embryo will implant. This problem is poorly understood, and other than trying different types of estrogen, it doesn't have a good solution. Doctors have tried a wide variety of other additives to help with this problem, but so far, nothing seems to work consistently from patient to patient, or even in the same woman from one attempt to the next. It is an active area of research, but right now, nobody has an answer for persistently thin uterine linings. Recently, doctors learned that changing the time of transfer after the progesterone is started can improve the chances for an embryo to implant. Think of it this way. After a woman starts progesterone, the uterine lining starts changing. It takes a while for all the changes needed to allow an embryo to implant. Put an embryo in too soon or too late, and even a normal embryo won't implant. At IVF1, if a patient has had an IVF cycle fail after transfer, we recommend a test called the Endometrial Receptivity Array, or ERA. This test quantifies the changes that occur in the uterine lining and can determine for an individual woman the optimal time for an embryo transfer. 
There are a few additional tests to evaluate the uterine lining that are in the pipeline, but they don't currently have enough evidence that they are accurate enough and useful enough to start recommending just yet. But we hope to have some additional tools in the next few years. In the meantime, check out this playlist to learn more about additional tests available right now. Before you go, like this video. If you have questions or an idea for a future episode, leave it in the comments. And you should definitely subscribe to Infertility TV now for new episodes weekly. It's like having a fertility specialist in your phone.